Welcome to the Best of Beaver County, presented by St. Barnabas, a weekly segment dedicated to putting the focus on the amazing things and the amazing people behind them in Beaver County. The Best of Beaver County is sponsored by and content is provided by St. Barnabas. The show airs every Thursday from 11 to 11.30 on WBBP, WMBA, 99.3 FM, and Facebook Live. Now, with no further ado, let's welcome host Mike Romai to introduce today's program. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Best of Beaver County on the St. Barnabas Radio Station. I'm Mike Romai, and we have a very interesting show for you today. We recently spoke with Helen Kissick, president of the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce, and Bethany Williams, executive director of the Beaver County Regional Council of Governments. They provided a 2020 year in review for us, and while it was a challenging time, there were a lot of people doing a lot of work in keeping Beaver County moving forward. Having said that, we thought it would be a good idea to bring Helen and Bethany back to talk about 2021. So join me as we welcome back Bethany Williams and Helen Kissick. So I noticed neither one of you brought a crystal ball <laughs> or, or wearing a turban to <laughs> predict the future. But uh, as we look forward to 2021, aside from the fact that we're really looking forward to being able to do these without wearing face masks, What's, uh, is there any outlook? I mean, you talk to the business leaders out there, and uh, do, they, do you kind of feel like, as we hear the national news uh, talking, that there's going to be a vaccination on the horizon and maybe we're turning the corner? What are businesses, uh, what are municipalities um, and, and governments uh, thinking about 2021? Do they dare think about doing something normal in 2021? <laughs> well, I'm so glad we're having this discussion uh, now in, in early December rather than in early November, because at that point, I don't think we had the positive signs with regards to vaccinations that uh, we've received over the last couple of weeks in terms of the developments and the number of players who, who are uh, part of uh, building solutions in, in terms of vaccinations. So from a uh, business, running a business point perspective, while we've all been trying really hard to socially distance, to wear masks and to, to do all the things that we wanted to do, now it seems like we're, we're getting a uh, new life with the potential for vaccinations helping us to potentially make that bigger move forward. And, and so with that, I think comes a real sense of optimism. But like I said a month ago, had you asked me what 2021 was going to look like, I would have said, well, we better be prepared to continue to, to you know, buckle down because there is no longer term solution yet. And hey, we still have to see what vaccinations can really do. But I, I sense in the, in the business community that, that folks are hopeful uh, that this will help us to turn that corner. Bethany, do you find yourself being a sounding board sometimes throughout 2020? Uh, and now you say, well, you know, we can make that New Year's resolution, mm -hmm. a new start for 2021. Uh, are they optimistic about it? You know, I think we're all uh, learning the fact that life will look different from here on out because we've learned a lot in 2020. You know, I think we've we've learned what uh, we needed to improve on, the things that um, we have already done well, the things that we like about ourselves, the things that we don't like about ourselves. And so I think as we move forward, um, for municipalities, we're full on in budget season. So we're, you know, we're planning towards 2021. But, it, you know, it's it's challenging because I think we want what's best for our neighbors. We want what's best for our own families. And so we want to make sure that people are safe. But I do think, you know, uh, if we lose hope, then we lose everything, you know. And so I think if we can kind of look towards the future and feel like, you know, there's brighter days ahead, which, you know, hopefully there are, mm -hmm. you know, in the near future. I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see something happen in the next couple of months that would, you know, transition us a little bit back into what feels like normal. But, you know, normal doesn't have to be what we used to be. And normal can be uh, a, a renewed sense of neighborliness and care for each other and a, a unified vision for how we want to care, you know, look out for the future of Beaver County. And, and I think that's where we're inching into. We may not look like 2019 Beaver County, but we'll look like 2021 Beaver County in a, a new, stronger light where we really understand ourselves a lot better. Yeah. And I would guess it's difficult for both of you dealing with municipalities and businesses, uh, as we've heard that there are would be any number of businesses that weren't going to survive this. They were going to have to shutter their doors because they just can't make it through it. Um, when you talk to them, 
uh, how do you, how can you give them hope? How can you, what do you say to them to hang on? Uh, that it's going to get better because you're dealing with council of governments and so you're talking about uh, monies coming from the state budgets and, and those sort of things, which we know are notoriously slow. And so small businesses during this pandemic, they were also waiting for some kind of government assistance that was slow in coming if it ever did. What do you have to, how do you work with them on those sort of things? Do they turn to you for that advice? Certainly uh, in 2020, the, the phone has rung on a number of occasions uh, into the chamber office where folks were searching for a sounding board, uh, suggestions, how to do better. And so in 2020, it became a lot of, well, how do you manage under the pandemic? What, what course of action do you need to take? And, and a big chunk of it was how do you access, for example, Paychecks Protection Program, uh, CARES Act funding, whatever that might have been. That is a double-edged sword, right? Because if your business really wasn't sustainable under pandemic conditions, but you had coverage through financial assistance, that seems to delay in some ways the inevitable, right? Where you're forced, you really as a business owner had to look at ways, how do I pivot? How do I become mainstream in this new way of doing business. And if the PPP funding was used to kind of stick to the old ways, I think you're going to struggle. And it depends on the business that you're in as well. Some businesses will rebound rather quickly. You know, maybe it's a matter of months uh, where they get their legs back under them and, and get up and go. Then there's other businesses and, and uh, tourism and restaurants have been mentioned in that category. Um, it's going to take 18 months plus. And so as a business owner, you must make your decisions not with next week in mind. You got to make it with 18 months in mind. And you got to think about what's my demand pattern look like today and how might this over time work its way back? You cannot make those decisions on, on a, just a month looking forward. And that, frankly, for many folks who are used to living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. This is a really challenging environment where you must look beyond what's ahead for you for, for this coming year. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the business owners that I spoke with in 2020, I tried to really get them to think that way. Can you see demand coming back within X amount of time? If you can, then build your bridge to get there. If you don't, then you need to really revamp your business model altogether. Or, and this isn't a bad solution, sometimes you need to get the heck out. That business may not be sustain sustainable. Um, we could talk all day about this. That's calling somebody's baby ugly. And that's <laughs> not a great conversation to have, but mm. it has to be done. Yeah, uh, a, a very good point. Bethany, working with, with governments as well, uh, municipalities uh, and the CARES Act, mm -hmm. uh, they were anxiously anticipating this money coming through. Not everybody got it. Some got more than others. Mm -hmm. uh, were they able to, as, uh, as Helen says, bridge uh, the divide between what is now and what to plan long term? Uh, it's kind of hard because with municipalities, uh, you, you need to spend the money that comes in in order to really, uh, you know, maintain a good balanced budget every year. Um, but I do think, you know, it was a relief for municipalities to feel like some of their exp uh, expenditures really were brought back and, and reimbursed. Not all of them, obviously, but um, it was it was a little bit of a, a kind of a deep sigh of like relief that, that you had a little bit of financial support come in. Um, for some municipalities, it looked larger, but they have a much larger uh, need for financial financial support. Um, but really, I think what's, what's uh, hard about right now is that we're really trying to paint a picture of what we don't know yet for our needs of next year. And so, one of the most valuable things that I think Helen and I both have been talking about for a long time is, is that we need to be able to paint an, actu an accurate picture of what's happened in 2020 so that we know how to plan contingency plans for 2021, what we've learned. And so, you know, the business impact survey that we're hoping to send out soon to be able to say, you know, did you lay employees off? Did you shut down for a period of time? What does your profit loss kind of thing feel like? Um, so if we can paint a current picture of the state of businesses in Beaver County, then we can actually look forward and say, hey, you know, state of Pennsylvania, here's where our businesses are hurting the most. And we have data to back it up. The resilience listening sessions that we did were really enlightening. One of the things that came out for the business community was that small business owners don't have HR experience. 
small business owners don't have contingency planning experience. And so if we can lean on some of our corporations in the area to maybe provide some technical support and volunteer their time and help our small businesses to make plans moving forward, we might be able to help them survive a little bit more. But I think it's going to be everybody teaming up to really support the business community and the municipalities as we move forward by having grace for them as they learn and supporting them as they move forward. A, a lot of people, businesses, and, and just consumers, uh, we're looking to the government uh, to, for a direction. Um, when the governor made certain decisions, some people loved it, other people despised it, thought that he was crazy for doing what he was doing. What would, what would you do differently? How could this have been handled differently? I'm not saying better or worse, but just differently from a business perspective. Hmm. Differently. Well, I, I think we all need to recognize what our respective roles are. And so when uh, the person in charge, in this case, the governor says, we're going to do A, B, and C, and this is how we expect you to act, I, I think a lot of us struggled with that direction didn't necessarily agree. And I think a lot of energy was spent fighting that direction rather than finding a way to uh, survive and thrive under, under those conditions. So I think the more we can kind of all swim in our lane, play our role. So if, 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 if the job of the governor and the government for Pennsylvania or in Beaver County, if, if their role is such and such, then let's find a way to um, collaboratively together move forward rather than waste all this time, energy, and resources on the bickering and the second guessing and everything else that goes with it. Hard that's to, that's my wish. The time. Yeah, we talked a bit earlier about, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to swim, uh, it's much better for you to swim with the, the, the current rather than against it, uh, mm -hmm. because that's, that's how you survive. Any, uh, any suggestions from the governmental side, the municipalities, in terms of what would be done differently to make this uh, more survivable? Yeah, I, it seems trite to say that hindsight is twenty twenty mm -hmm. <laughs> this year, but mm -hmm. uh, but you know, for for us, I think as we look back, um, to you know what we could have done differently and what we may be able to do differently is really opening up the lines of communications between us and the state. You know, I think what was difficult for Beaver County is that we don't have our own health department, and so all of our numbers were coming from outside. All of our data about the numbers that about you know our caseload and all of those different things for Beaver County were coming from the outside. And so we didn't feel like we had any autonomy in what was going on. And so we were grasping for control in criticizing the movement of the government or, you know, the numbers that were coming in that they weren't accurate or whatever the case was. But I think if we felt like there was an open door that we could talk to the state um, about the, the confusion and the frustration, rather than, you know, jumping to criticism, we would have handled it better on our end. And in the other respect, you know, if they had made more opportunities for us to speak into the process and say, here's where we feel like we're not being hear heard, or here's how it feels inaccurate on the ground. You know, I think what we really struggled with this year was having accurate information to make decisions from. And so as we move forward, I think what we know about ourselves moving forward into 2021 is that we need better data and better information that we can make confident decisions. You know, it may change in the next couple of weeks, but as long as you feel like you're making it from reliable, good information, then you'll feel less frustrated by the process and you won't feel like you're, you know, swept up by the waves the same way. Communication. Absolutely. Is the key. And communication is what we'll continue to do here on the Best of Beaver County in the St. Barnabas radio station. And we'll continue with Helen Kissick from the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce and with Bethany Williams from the Beaver County Regional Council on Governments. Tusca Plaza Shop and Save is looking forward to the future and is proud to celebrate our one year anniversary. And we want to thank you. Starting December 5th through January 5th, you get $10 back for every $100 you spend with your perks card. Visit Tusca Plaza Shop and Save at 4935 Tuscaroras Road in Beaver. We can't wait to celebrate the super savings all month long. Exclusions do apply. See customer service in store for details. Let's go out and say happy anniversary for one year at the Tusca Plaza Shop and Save. This is the best of Beaver County, and we're happy to have Helen Kissick and Bethany Williams with us today to talk about 2021, not necessarily predictions, but just to look ahead and hope to put 
2020 and the trials and tribulations that we've experienced behind us. As we look to 2021, Helen, are there any business trends uh, that you're seeing that, uh, that could be on the horizon? Well, the, the obvious one, of course, is, uh, you know, do business uh, where you can be online, where you can deliver in a curb, curbside uh, fashion and um, recognize when the time comes that, you know, it's time to go back to uh, a new 2021 uh, where you can uh, conduct your business in, in a way that, uh, that isn't necessarily restricted uh, by the pandemic. That's an obvious one. Uh, another obvious one is that uh, Shell will continue to, its construction on uh, its site and will come closer and closer to beginning its startup phase uh, of the plant. And with that, a number of new businesses will uh, locate in our area to support the plant and its routine operations. And so workforce preparedness has always been a challenge for Beaver County. Uh, that'll continue to be a, a challenge in somewhat of a positive way. Uh, but ultimately you want um, the workforce that is here uh, today to be able to take on the roles that will uh, be open. Um, before the pandemic struck, we were short on the right workforce, you know, for folks like Shell. Uh, since then, Amazon has also opened up uh, uh, its facility on the border uh, between Beaver County and Allegheny County. That'll have a significant uh, draw on available resources. And so the challenge for businesses is how do I make sure that I have a competitive workforce, um, pers people ready to, to come and work for me? And if it's not within this region, then how do I attract from other regions to make sure that we have that skilled labor force here? So it's, that's always been an issue for this area, that supply demand pool, yeah. but it's even more critical for 2021 and beyond. It's, an, it's interesting that you bring that up because I remember four years ago when the same discussion was occurring. A shell was going to break ground and Shell was going, to, they need these type of workers and they need welders and they need all these people, but they had to look outside of the county to find them mm -hmm. because the skills weren't here. Now we're looking into the future and we're hearing more or less the same thing in terms of what are we prepared for? How do we better prepare for uh, the coming trends and the, uh, the coming, uh, coming uh, industry that's, uh, that could be here? Yeah, and I don't wanna say we haven't made any progress, we have. You look at um, Community College Beaver County and it's uh, Shell Process, uh, or it's Center for Process Technology that has opened up in the program that's been built. You look at a Beaver County uh, Technical and Trade School that's, that's right next door. You look at what Penn State has been doing, what Geneva's doing. Mm. You look at so many influences, even with job training Beaver County, where they're really trying to equip uh, the individuals today. Um, I believe the challenge still for this area and others is um, the manufacturing industry, the chemical industry, isn't necessarily seen as uh, a job that folks desire or strive towards because they just don't know enough about what those jobs entail. And uh, if we can continue to break down the barriers and make folks more knowledgeable about uh, the industry itself and the good paying jobs that are here and the way that we can be stewards of our environment rather than it being seen as a negative to the environment, I think if we can continue to educate both at the middle school, high school uh, level, uh, that's, that's one set of folks, but the really important set of folks, which I'm personally most frustrated with, is uh, we've certainly seen it where people have been laid off, become unemployed in this environment that we're in. We need to find a better way to get those folks redirected, rechanneled, reskilled, upskilled in a way that they then become available for these industries that are frankly begging for workers, right? I, we held, uh, the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce uh, held three virtual job fairs over the past year. In the beginning, you had, no lie, 25 to 30 employers and 90 potential applicants who would show up at the virtual job fair. The last one that we held, the numbers were even, 20 employers and 20 job applicants. Mm -hmm. That's a gross mismatch, right? You need that workforce that's ready and able to step to the plate. Why aren't we responding? Why aren't Beaver County people responding? Is it that uh, Votex uh, and those type of uh, 
trades schools are, are not available to them or they just don't know where to look for them? I believe it's more the latter. I think it's more uh, folks aren't necessarily aware what all is available right under their noses. And then again, the pandemic has caused some dislocation too because people who now have to care for kids at home and, and school from home and uh, aren't able to um, necessarily do the routine work that, that, that they were accustomed to in a face-to-face -face kind of setting, they're now displaced in a way that, that uh, is challenging. Hopefully, again, with the pandemic clearing, a piece of that workforce will, will be sprung loose and available to support the employers here in Beaver County. So if you were to look at the audience and say, this is what you need to do, this is how to be prepared for the upcoming jobs, what would you say to them? How can, you, how can they help? Yeah, the number one channel that I would recommend folks to go through is actually job training of Beaver County because uh, they have a way to figure out, they have a job board that's available and they have a, w a way to find uh, the right skills for you and match you with the right training and with the employers as well. So job training of Beaver County is an excellent way to start. I would also look to the uh, you know community college, the, the trade school, um, the, uh, the RMUs, the Genevas, and the Penn States as well. But mm -hmm. that's a starting point. And listen, if they can't find it, have them call the chamber. Mm -hmm. We will match you with somebody who can find a solution for you. And all these solutions, or at least the path to the solutions, can be found online. Job training, Beaver County Chamber. Absolutely. All these places. Absolutely. So go online and look them up. Bethany, you've been uh, out of the conversation <laughs> over here, but you've been shaking your head. I can yeah. see you agreeing with what Helen is saying. So you're hearing the same things and you see the same future. Yeah, I do. I think um, another industry that we have a lot of jobs available in Beaver County is the healthcare industry. And um, CCBC has a phenomenal nursing program um, that connects with the G a Geneva College uh, BSN program. Um, and there's a company called Portage Learning in Chippewa, Pennsylvania, that offers um, the prerequisite courses you might need in order to get into those programs. And so we've got pipelines for people if they're interested in upskilling themselves to be able to take on these jobs. It's just a matter of knowing where to look look for them. I do think the other biggest challenge we have moving forward in, in attracting people to the area, either industry-wise or residentially, is our broadband issues, especially moving forward with the pandemic. Um, I'm grateful for the work of Lance Grable at the county who has been trying to map our broadband to figure out where our coverage is and where it isn't, what our underserved areas are and how we can bring more services there. But, you know, we really struggle to have, have good quality broadband, especially in our rural areas. And so with everyone overtaxing their systems at the moment and working from home, um, the biggest challenge for many families in rural contexts and in low income contexts has been access to the internet to be able to upskill themselves. And so we need to be able to figure out how to fill that gap in for people because it, it may just be a lack of resource in order to be able to get into the places where you can start learning and upskilling yourself. It's very interesting that you say that because if you have internet access, if you have laptops, computers, mm -hmm. desk computers, you, it, you scratch your head. What do you mean you don't have internet in Beaver <laughs> mm -hmm. County? What do you mean? And, and like it with the schools that are going all virtual, some of the students don't have the technology to do that. So how do we reach them? Yeah, I, I mean, really what it's going to take is a unified approach to say, here are where the spots are in Beaver County that don't have good access. Um, you know, school districts are doing their best to really meet the needs of, of their students at the moment. But, um, you know, things like the learning pods that have started in Beaver uh, Falls that the Neighborhood North Museum of Play started where when kids are not in in-person school, they're in these environments in which they can do their online learning and learn in a group with sort of with staff there who are able to facilitate that. Um, there are places that have compensated for the need, but I think as we move forward, we really do need a good plan of saying to the broadband companies, here's where our gaps are. How do we fill those needs? Because we don't we don't know the solution ourselves. We're going to have to work with them to move forward with that. But I mean, companies when they look at an area now, they're looking for good broadband connection. And so whether it's a manufacturing company or an office building where they're now having employees work from home, if there's not good internet connection in a certain area of the county, we really need to look at that as, as a, a valuable infrastructure piece that needs to be built up here. And so part of that's putting together a plan for the county. And the county has started that process, and they just need the financial support to do more of that. Yeah. Now, with your experience in working with the, the governments and the municipalities uh, and belt tightening over the past year, uh, looking ahead, can you tell us if there are, you know, to downsize or streamline 
Uh, they're spending. Are there any mergers that we know about on the horizon? None that I can speak about with any confidence. I know that people revisit the conversation every so often. It's definitely a priority of the state. Um, really, what you'll probably start to see first will be fire department mergers, um, maybe police department mergers, where one police department is providing services to the areas that connect to, to them. New Brighton is a great example of that. Um, but I, you know, I think for municipal mergers or, you know, like other things like that. That's down the road a little bit. There would have to be a lot of studies done in that regard. But um, I think resource resources right now are all limited for everyone. So we're going to have to figure out how to do life together in the most productive way. And that's going to mean losing a little bit of what we think is most important at the moment. Um, but it's going to be different answers for everybody. And, and so we've got to really work with the state and they provide uh, very good resources to be able to kind of study that and figure out where the best places to save on cost and to provide better service are. And so we're going to have to ask those questions coming up soon. Okay. Helen, is there anything uh, missed or anything that you want the audience to know about through the chamber and the businesses in Beaver County? I would just encourage them to uh, look to you know, maybe come to the chamber first, uh, but there's many other partners in crime, as I like to call them. We, we have a program called Rooted Locally, where we're really trying to uh, equip business owners and service providers with the tools to be able to market themselves, be more visible. And uh, please come visit our website and, and look for uh, this campaign called Rooted Locally. We are trying to find the best way that we can, or a way, to enable uh, local businesses to, to thrive. And if this is one way that I think we can do that by supporting each other. Plant your roots. Plant your roots. All right, uh, <laughs> Bethany, anything that we need to tell the audience about that we didn't touch on yet? No, I, I agree with uh, Helen. I think what matters moving forward is really figuring out ways that we can work together to support each other. And Rooted Locally is actually an initiative that COG has participated in because the biggest concern for municipalities right now is that their tax base will go out with their businesses. And so, you know, as we work together to preserve what we care about here in Beaver County, we want to get deeper roots here in Beaver County and to really have, you know, the strength of that tree that can bend under the weight of the wind here. And, and resilience needs to be a part of our, our mantra here here from here on out of saying we've got to be able to weather the storms and come out stronger in the other end and the only way to do that is to learn more to adapt more and to you know push forward your pride about what you do and and really sell that to the community and then the community needs to buy in and really invest locally as well okay. you guys are so passionate about this <laughs> you know always looking you know optimism and the future and you know the passion that you have for it i hope that it is contagious you know, speaking of contagion so over all this time, but I, I <laughs> the really good hope kind of contagious. the positivity that, that you both speak on <laughs> uh, is you. contagious to the county. Uh, thank you for all that you do. I appreciate it. Bethany Williams from the Beaver County Regional Council of Governments and Helen Kissick from the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Mike. Thanks it's for having pleasure. us. And speaking of businesses, let me tell you about the Tusca Plaza Shop and Save. Proud to celebrate our one year anniversary, and we want to thank you. One year, it's amazing how we've grown, just like a little toddler. It seems like yesterday, they were just opening the doors. Starting December 5th through January 5th, get $10 back for every $100 you spend with your perks card. Visit Tusca Plaza Shop and Save at 4935 Tuscaroras Road in Beaver. We can't wait to celebrate the super savings $10 back for every $100 you spend with your Perks card all month long. Exclusion supply. See customer service in store for details. That's the Tusca Plaza Shop and Save. And this has been the Best of Beaver County on the St. Barnabas radio station. Thank you to our guests for being here today. Thank you for watching and listening to the broadcast. I'm Mike Robai, and uh, we'll have another exciting show coming up next week. So stay tuned to the St. Barnabas Best of Beaver County. Thank you for listening to the Best of Beaver County. St. Barnabas is pleased to have provided content and sponsorship for the program. Tune in this Sunday at 1130 for an encore presentation of today's program on Beaver County Radio. And next Thursday at 11 for another edition of the Best of Beaver County on WBVP, WMBA, and 99.3 FM.